So this is part two of my Vala GTK and elementary tutorial. In part one of this short tutorial, we went over getting started with the elementary SDK and created a very simple elementary app with Vala. Now, unlike that video, we're not really gonna do any coding in this one. Instead, we're gonna explore the code base a little bit and hopefully you'll have a better understanding of how GTK and Vala works. A question I've seen pop up a few times in regards to Vala and GTK is around IDEs and text editors. The only IDE that comes close to being a official IDE for Vala development is Gnome Builder. I have mixed feelings about Gnome Builder. If you want to use it, have at it. But if you're expecting Visual Studio level IntelliSense or any other goodies that go along with more industry standard IDEs like IntelliJ or Visual Studio, you're going to be disappointed. My favorite text editor and the one that we're going to be using in this video is Visual Studio Code. And if you're interested, there's a video on my channel on how to get started with it. It's a great little text editor. Another common question I see asked is around learning the Vala API. If you're used to IDEs like Visual Studio that offers really powerful code completion just by pressing the period key after a function, you're going to have a really hard time adapting to Vala. Like I said before, Builder offers some form of code completion, but it's nothing like you would expect in Visual Studio. Instead, the best option is just to keep the Vala documentation open in a Chrome browser and memorize it as you use it. So for this video, I'm going to be making a few assumptions. The first assumption is that you've watched the previous video, and the second assumption is that you know at least a little bit about programming. I'm going to try to explain some of the core concepts, but I'm also going to stay away from some of the more fundamental programming things like return values, access modifiers, variables, and things like that. Now what we're looking at here is the code we wrote in the last video. And while this code represents an actual elementary application, we're going to be taking a look at a little bit bigger application that I wrote off camera. It's a very simple text viewer app based on an example of a text viewer that I found in the GNOME Vala documentation. This particular application also has a header bar with a built-in toolbar button. It's very similar to the way the header bar and toolbar buttons are implemented in Scratch. So here are two pieces of code that are used to create the exact same application. One is written using object-oriented programming and the other is using just regular procedural programming, which Vala actually supports. You can see in the file on the left hand side that the code is organized under the class keyword which makes it an object and on the right hand side everything is organized under the main method. The object oriented example on the left hand side still has a main method though it's static and it's embedded in the class. A really cool and interesting feature about Vala and compared to other languages with GTK bindings is Vala doesn't force you to use object oriented programming. You don't have to write your elementary app using namespaces and classes if you don't want to. Though I recommend that you should because the point of object-oriented programming is to help you organize and understand your code better. If you're just writing functions all over the place, or even worse, just having one giant function with all of your code in it, it makes it very difficult to not only understand, but test. So one thing you may notice that's different in this example than our previous application that we wrote was the addition of that using statement at the top of the file. Now what that's doing is sort of importing the GTK namespace, which allows us to use shorthand versions of GTK objects. In the example on the right hand side, we're just using INIT under the main method. And on the left hand side, we're using GTK.INIT. Because we're using the GTK namespace, we don't actually need the GTK dot in front of anything besides GTK.main. So for the rest of this video, we're going to be focusing on the object oriented example because that's kind of the recommended way of using Vala to write any GTK app. So if you're familiar with languages like C Sharp and Java, Vala should look very familiar. At the top, we have class, elementary file viewer, colon, window. The colon window portion signifies that the elementary file viewer class inherits from window. So you could think of it as elementary file viewer is a window, specifically a GTK window. Vala follows the very common class-based object system compared to more uncommon object systems like prototypes. Most GTK components are objects and you instantiate them by using the new keyword. Most components have properties, and GTK is somewhat inconsistent on how you set the properties. Most properties have public setters, and you set them by declaring that the property is equal to a value. Other times you have to call a specific setter method like set underscore title, and occasionally you can do both. When you need to know how to interact with a component or object, just refer back to the Voladoc. Here we have the header bar documentation, and it clearly shows all the properties and methods for that object. Debugging and troubleshooting in Vala is somewhat of a hassle, and to the best of my knowledge, there's no troubleshooting or debugging tools that provide things like breakpoints for it. Instead, I found that the simplest way to debug your application is to simply use the print command. You can use the print command to print all sorts of things to the console while your application is running. This is useful if you have variables or properties that are changing and it's causing breakages in your code. 
If you're using this method to debug your code, you'll quickly find that the print command will only accept strings. This is a problem because a lot of times variables and properties contain other types like ints and even just objects. For simple types, you can use the toString method. The toString method is a method that exists on every object that inherits from the glib object, I think. And while we're talking about types, let's talk about implicit and explicit typing. Vala supports the var keyword, and it's a little complicated to explain how the compiler infers types, but notice how we changed that type from image to var. Basically, the Vala compiler is inferring the type declaration from the type of object that we're instantiating. Notice that the new keyword says new image. The var keyword is syntactic sugar, and you can choose to use it or not use it. Most code examples you'll see use it because it's just easier to use. Objects that inherit from GTK container automatically have a method called add. It's the add method that you use to add objects to other objects and containers. You can see above how we added the open button to the header, and here we add the text view to our scroll window. And if we comment it out, you'll see that the text view is gone. That's because we removed the portion where the text view is added to our object. So for this particular application, pretty much everything is organized within a vertical GTK box. Now, if I'm not mistaken, most elementary applications use a GTK grid. However, I'm more familiar with boxes and VBoxes, so that's why I used it here. But GTK boxes and grids are sort of the de facto way of organizing all of your widgets into a specific area. Most applications have multiple boxes and grids, but our application is pretty simple, so we're only using one. Technically, our header bar is a horizontal box that's sort of wrapped in this helper object called header bar. Needless to say, when we click our open file header bar button, we want it to actually do something. We not only want it to open a file chooser window, but we also want to be able to, you know, pick a file and open it. So those are two distinct operations. So we have one function that opens the file chooser dialog and another function that actually opens and reads the file. We have this try catch wrapped around the code in our open file function because the Vala compiler will actually complain if it's not there. The compiler is smart enough to know that there's a potential unhandled exception within that function. And because all the heavy lifting of our application happens within the elementary file viewer constructor, all we have to do in our main method is instantiate a copy of our elementary file viewer. For any window you want the user to be able to quit, you'll need to hook up the destroy signal. Main quit is the name of the function that effectively kills the GTK application. And all main methods should end with a return zero because any number above zero indicates that there was some sort of error during execution. Now you may have noticed that we didn't use Granite in here. From what I understand of the history of Granite, Granite was a library that was developed by the elementary OS team because of perceived gaps in the Vala and GTK APIs. Much of the code written by the elementary OS team to fill these gaps was actually eventually upstream to the GTK project. Much of the code found in Granite are helper functions and utilities that can actually be found elsewhere in GTK. The main reason why I didn't use Granite in my examples is because I didn't find it to be particularly well documented. I'd love to see more information on how to use Granite and the best use cases for it from the elementary OS team. From the looks of it, there's some really cool functions in here like convenient wrappers for the dialogues that pop up when you right-click items in the dock. So that just about wraps up this tutorial. The last thing I want to show you, though, is how similar Vala is to C-sharp. On the right-hand side is a C-sharp application using GTK3 bindings. I copied the code almost word for word from the Vala side, and when I try to compile, I get only six errors. And that's due to just simple differences in the APIs that I'm not going to fix. I hope that you've enjoyed this tutorial. Making these sorts of programming videos is actually a lot of work, and I know it's not perfect, and I'm sure that I missed a whole lot of stuff or didn't explain something right, but hopefully after watching these videos, you know at least enough to get started with an elementary OS app. So if you like this video and you want to see more like it, leave me a like, comment, and subscribe to the channel. I appreciate your support, and thanks for watching.